for 2021, Adidas brings us the Adios Pro 2. While it looks like a very different shoe, do these changes actually make a difference? It's time to lace up the Adios Pro 2 and take it for a run. Six point four one miles, seven minutes, forty three seconds per mile, one hundred and sixty three beats per minute for today's workout. Going for a first run in the Adidas Adios Pro Two. Now, before I give you my thoughts on this shoe, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that I purchased myself. No one sent it to me. No one's paying me to make this video. No one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Adidas Adios Pro 2. First, let's go over some specs. While the overall main points are the same, there are some changes in a lot of different areas of the shoe. The first being the stack height. This year, the stack height is 39.5 millimeters in height, bringing it just under the World Athletics maximum allowable stack height. In fact, even on the website itself, Adidas is telling you that it is cleared for use under world athletics rules. This year it's got a 10 millimeter drop giving us 29.5 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. And in terms of that stack height, what we have is Light Strike Pro and Energy Rods. The same that we had last year, but this year they've really changed the way that they've sculpted that midsole foam, cutting away a lot of the foam that was underneath the arch and exposing some of those energy rods, not only on the medial side under the arch, but there's even a little window to see the energy rods on the lateral side as well. On the outsole, we've also have some changes while the overall kind of setup is the same, like a big kind of circular pad, like a lily pad of continental rubber in the forefoot and two racing strips of rubber along the heel and the sides of the foot. What has changed is that there is a bit of texture. There's a different kind of finish to the rubber that's on the outsole here. And there's also a difference in the toe where again, the material or the finish at least of this rubber feels a little bit different. And there's also a little notch right where the big toe is. There's also the addition of some speed holes in the rubber, but overall the same spirit carries over from last year where it's very thin amount of rubber, a very minimal amount of rubber coverage. It's not gonna be adding a lot of weight at all. On the upper, we have Cellar Mesh, but this year it's Cellar Mesh 2.0. I loved Cellar Mesh last year in the Adios Pro 1. That shoe was one of my favorite shoes for 2020, and the upper was a big part of that. This year we've got a lot of the same, but there are a lot of different structural elements, and those are these kind of white tiger stripes that you see all along this shoe. And so it's really interesting the way that they've used a transparent Cellar Mesh material when they are gonna put this much kind of underlays throughout the upper of the shoe. And the way that this orange insole looks in here, I just think it looks fantastic with this little peak of orange along the heel. It just looks so great. It was almost a disappointment when I put my foot with a black sock in it and then I didn't see that orange anymore because this orange just looks fantastic. I'm really starting to love the color orange in shoes, which is, not something I thought I'd ever say, but this design looks absolutely fantastic. Also in the upper, we have a slightly different tongue from last year, it feels like. It still looks like it's taken straight off of a soccer boot, and it's very thin. And then that circles back into a little bit of padding and some bumper pads along the back sides of the heel and a little notch uh, for the Achilles. The heel cut back here is very floppy, not a lot of structure at all. There's a little bit of extra material, like a perforated, almost a very soft, almost like a felt or like a suede type of material that lines the heel cup as well, that I think is gonna aid in making sure everything stays nice and comfortable back there. It's a very breathable upper with this cellar mesh, but it's also a very strong material that's gonna be able to withstand a lot of forces that get put into this shoe. 
All told, this shoe comes this year in at a total weight of 7.6 ounces, which makes it a little bit lighter than last year's shoe at 7.9 ounces. And for reference, last year's shoe had a stack height of 39 millimeters, but it had an eight millimeter drop, giving us 31 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. So just a little bit different in terms of the way that the shoe is laid out. So what was it like to run in this shoe? The first mile for today was a warm up, and the way that this shoe feels, it feels a lot like a lot of other marathon racing shoes where it's tolerable at kind of warm up paces, at recovery paces, kind of like when you're not at race pace, it feels pretty good, but I'd say it's probably better than average in terms of being able to live with this shoe at kind of like your regular everyday pace or like for your warm up. I think the best feeling that I could say when you're at easier paces, when you're running with this much light strike pro underfoot is that it feels kind of like a softball where like there's kind of two layers of it. There's the outer wrap of the softball where it's kind of like a little bit squishy, you could squeeze it a little bit, but underneath that there's a hard core. Now, I know this is a single layer foam, but when I'm at just kind of my easy paces warming up before we get to the work part of the workout, that's kind of what I feel. I feel like an initial softness and then it gets kind of firm, like the firmness kind of asserts itself pretty early. But overall for the easy part of the run, it, it's not a big deal. The shoe is very livable. It still feels like you're doing a warm up in a marathon super shoe and a tall shoe, uh, but uh, that's kind of like the dynamics of the Light Strike Pro at easy paces or at recovery paces. Where it starts to get really interesting and where it should get interesting for a marathon super shoe is when you're at marathon pace. And I feel like this shoe does really well at marathon pace. They're like that kind of like two tier system that I was talking about in the foam melts into one really nice foam. And as you're pushing off harder and running a little bit harder, your foot kind of pushes into the foam and the impact from the room gets absorbed. And as you're pushing off and going through your gait cycle, a lot of that force gets pushed back to you. Also at marathon pace, these energy rods, they start to compress and they bend. And then when you lift off, it snaps back into place into its kind of natural state and as you're doing that you get a really strong push and a sense of propulsion from the energy rods which all works timing wise really well at marathon pace. I feel like it's easy to get to marathon pace and it's easy to stay at marathon pace for me in these shoes. It's just a pleasure to run at marathon pace in the shoe. It just the whole thing works together in a really nice system. The benefit I think this year in terms of this cutaway underneath the arch is that I feel like it's making it that much easier to compress the carbon. And so what I think is that more people are going to be able to bend this carbon up front here, which then makes it easier as you're pushing off to get that bounce back. So uh, I think it's gonna be easier and more accessible for more people because it's got that cutaway compared to last year. When I'm running well, I'm running in the forefoot of the shoe and it feels really nice to just kind of land in this part. There's a little bit of a rocker that you're getting through here as well that helps with that compression, but also helps pick up that heel so you can get forward and moving into your next foot strike. Now let's talk about when I put this shoe into threshold pace. So the workout was a warm up mile, a marathon effort mile, a threshold pace mile, and then back to marathon and threshold. So at four miles of workout, two each of marathon miles and threshold miles. So at threshold pace, pretty much all of the things that I talk about at marathon pace, how much I like kind of squishing into the light strike, but not too much, and then getting a nice sense of pop as the, the foam and the energy rods are rebounding together kind of in harmony. And I just feel like kind of like the sweet spot or like the power band, however you want to say it, the area where this shoe can do well, I think is really wide. And I feel like you're getting a really nice response from the shoe from like marathon pace all the way up to like 5K pace and probably even shorter than that as well. I just feel like the the energy rods and the light strike pro like aren't bottoming out. I feel like the more I put into it, the more I'm getting out of it. And even at kind of like relatively easier paces at marathon effort, I'm still accessing a lot of that goodness, a lot of like what's intended from the shoe. I feel like I'm getting all the way down at marathon pace as well. So throughout kind of like the power band or like the sweet spot of this shoe, it's really wide. I feel like a lot of different people at different levels in terms of their skill and experience are gonna be able to feel the benefits as intended for this shoe. And that's another part of what makes it so amazing. The upper, there are some changes in terms of like the fit and feel of it. It's a different material. The Cellar Mesh 2 is a little bit different than the Cellar Mesh 1. But overall, there's a lot of familiarity in terms of the fit. 
I will say though, I didn't feel like my toes were getting crunched in this. Now I probably need to put it in a much longer run than just six miles to be able to really definitively say, but so far it feels like I had a little bit more space up in here. It was a little bit more, not relaxed, but it wasn't so crunched. Last year's Adios Pro 1, I felt like this is definitely a racer fit shoe. The Adios Pro 2 still feels like a racing shoe, but it's not quite as un uncomfortable. My toenails were a little bit happier by the end of the run. The one issue that I did have uh, was with the tongue. I think that this material that they've used for this year's Adios Pro 2, it's a soft floppy like neoprene type of material, but it's got a little bit of an edge to it. It's got a hard edge uh, kind of on the side. And so uh, on my right foot for today, the sock kind of slid down a little bit. And then this part of the tongue was rubbing directly against kind of like where my uh, ankle was bending. And so by the end of today, I had a, a little bit of a raw spot. I suspect if I had taken this for say like a half marathon run or a little bit longer, that might've kind of broken through the skin or caused some you know pretty uncomfortable chafing. So something to watch out for, for me, I mean, it's a, kind of a user error thing. I just make sure I pull up the socks next time I, I wear, wear the shoe. But for those of you that do have some sensitivity with tongues that, uh, can dig in a little bit. This is just something to kind of just watch out for, but ultimately I don't anticipate that it's gonna be a big problem. The bumper pads in the heel, I feel like they're doing their job. I felt nice and secure in the heel in this Adios Pro 2. I think the ideal use case for this shoe is pretty wide as far as a racing shoe goes. I think it's a shoe that can hold up to a lot of training use as well. So it's not one of those shoes that you're gonna to have to baby and worry about like not putting way too many miles on the shoe. I think you're gonna be able to do a lot of workouts on it and use it in anything from as short as a 5K up to as long as a marathon and kind of everything in between. I feel like the shoe can handle that really well. And I think we're gonna see a lot of these Adios Pro 2s on people's feet because this is a very fun shoe and a very capable shoe. And a shoe that I think a lot of people can be able to run in well and have a good time. If you have any questions about the Adios Pro 2, feel free to put them in the comments down below or better yet, feel free to stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to be able to talk to you in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, what's going on?